Hello my friends and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of up potting, taking some seedlings that I recently started and transferring them to a larger pot, or in this case, red plastic cups. I love using these for starting plants at home. The reason I'm doing this is to allow the plant to further mature, develop a more vigorous root system. So by the time I transfer it into the garden, it has a much better success rate. It's able to fend off against some of the pests that can take out a smaller seedling. So I thought I'd take the camera along with me today and share with you some tips and tricks so that you can have a greater success and avoid some of the most common pitfalls. Also just help you to streamline this whole operation, bring the cost down, and make sure that you're having fun doing it. So today I'll be up potting the lemon cucumber seeds that I started just a short time ago. As you can see, I used some painter's tape to mark down what it is that I'm growing and the date. So literally, like a week and a half ago, I planted these and we already got some nice sprouts growing. Now lemon cucumber, if you're not familiar, looks like almost like a tennis ball. It's about that size, it's yellow, and they're quite delicious. Now the container that I started these seeds in is one of those rotisserie chicken containers. I've been using these for years. I collected a bunch of them years back and just keep reusing them every season. They're perfect, especially if you're starting from the Jiffy Seed Pods, which is my favorite way to start seeds at home. Really streamlines the operation, makes it easy. And these are just peat pellets and you add water and it hydrates. This is what they look like before you add water, just a little disc. You add water, it hydrates, put your seed in there, it retains moisture very well. And you can see we got a little root popping out there. This is perfect time for transplanting into a larger pot or a cup. And here's a quick tip for you. You can buy these Jiffy Pods in bulk. True, you can buy a little greenhouse with a dome cover and these little pods in there for a relatively good deal. You may want to get a few of those to start so that you have those greenhouse domes on hand. But when it comes time for the following season to replant, buy these in bulk, you'll get a huge discount. And they come in different sizes as well, meaning they swell up, they get much larger. These are the 36 millimeter, I find them to be good for most types of seeds, but if you're growing things like tomatoes or moringa, for example, things that have a more vigorous, deeper root system, I recommend going with the 50 millimeter Jiffy Pods. So there's the first tip. If you just wanna make quick work out of this whole process, get some of these Jiffy Pods, get yourself any container, if you can put a dome over the top to help keep the humidity in while the seeds are getting going, that's gonna be beneficial. And if you're watching this live, we're in mid-April, spring has arrived. It's not too late to start your seeds at home. A lot of these seeds are quick growing, and if you combine the humidity dome and even a heat mat underneath, those seedlings are gonna sprout and take off quickly. My next tip is to invest in some good quality potting mix. When we're up potting these seedlings, you don't wanna start with soil that you're just digging out of the ground at home. It can contain different microbes, funguses, fungus gnats that can really be detrimental to your seed's health. So get yourself a good bagged potting mix to get growing in. Now, as far as up potting goes, I recommend using a container that's one gallon or smaller. This is less than half a gallon. This is my preferable size. These plastic cups are cheap. And all you need to do is cut a little slit on either side of the cup with a pair of scissors, and that's gonna allow for adequate drainage. So I'm just gonna fill up my pot about halfway here with some soil. And if you wanna conserve soil, you don't have to fill it all the way up to the top. You can use just three quarters of the cup in total volume. So keep that in mind. You can really stretch this out, save money throughout this entire process. Now the next tip not to be overlooked, if you really wanna start a vigorous, healthy plant right from the gate, is to add in a little bit of this mycorrhizal inoculant. It's widely available. There's a lot of brands out there. I really have gotten some good results with this Myco Bliss as well as another product called Mycos. So check into those. I'll leave product links to everything I'm mentioning today in this video down below in the description box. So check that out. So what this is, is a fungus. And what it's gonna do is attach to your plant's roots, like little antennas, creating a further reach for the plant. It's gonna engulf this whole cup with thread-like hyphae strands known as mycorrhiza. And we're just gonna dust the top of the soil where the plant's roots are gonna come in contact. And here's our first little lemon cucumber. There's a little root poking out. And we'll set that right there on top of the inoculant. And now we'll add some more potting mix into the container. And we'll water our little friend in here. Now this next tip 
really important final step is going to protect your investment, help to ensure that this plant makes it to full maturity. And primarily what it's going to do is help to protect it from fungus gnats. Now fungus gnats, they fly around, they land on the soil surface, they lay their little eggs, they hatch into larva. This all happens very quickly and they'll start to actually eat the young tender roots of your little seedlings and can be devastating, can kill back the plant. So I've got a solution for you which is going to end that entirely. And quickly, if you're enjoying today's video, you found it helpful or entertaining in any way, do me a favor and smash that thumb button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day, and I'm always giving you updates on all the different things growing on around here. And if you tap that notification bell, you'll never miss a future episode. That'll keep you in the loop. And if you'd be so kind as to drop us a comment, we love to hear from you, we read them all. It means a lot to us. Thank you so much, everyone. So this material here is known as pumice. It's a volcanic rock, it's all natural, and it's beneficial to the garden in so many ways. It actually contains minerals and nutrients that are beneficial to your plant's health. And commonly, people will mix this into their potting mix for added drainage, especially beneficial with plants like succulents that really benefit from nice drainage in the soil. But you can also use this stuff as a mulch for your seedlings. And what this is gonna do is prevent those fungus gnats from laying their eggs, hatching into larva, and attacking your plants. It's also gonna to help to retain the moisture in your pots. It works just like a mulch does in the garden. We're gonna put a layer on top. It's gonna to help to block the sun, stopping it from drying out the soil. So we'll just sprinkle some of this on the surface. And that's all there is to it. A little goes a long way. The water flows right through it. And because it's a rock, it doesn't break down. So eventually when you transplant these out into the garden, you can just include that right into your soil. And it's gonna help with drainage. And again, add in some added minerals and nutrients to help feed the plant. Now, because the pumice is so porous and it absorbs moisture so well, it has some other common uses on the farm. Oftentimes this is used in horse stalls to help to soak up any moisture, urine and that sort of thing. And so because of that, you can pick this up usually at your farm store, it's called dry stall. And you can get the best deal on it that way. They come in 40 pound bags, but you can also get this online through Amazon. And like I said, a little goes a long way. So if you're unable to get it at your local farming supply store, just pick it up online. And just like that, this plant is ready to continually grow out and create a full size transplant for the garden for pennies on the dollar altogether. And I do like to put my seedlings in a vessel, some sort of a container like this bin here. That way they're protected. I can move them around, put them in the shade or part sun, wherever I need it. And I can also add in some water at the bottom of the bin here, and it'll actually absorb through those drainage holes and keep the plants watered. So I don't actually have to water every day. Now this whole process is fast and easy and you'll be successful using this technique. That's why I wanted to share it with you. I'm gonna continue on now, just set up the camera so you can see how quickly I can go through all these seedlings and get them potted up. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully I offered you some value for your time. Sure do appreciate you being here. Until next time, this is Dan from plantabundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.